Hi, my name is Paul Schirsch and welcome to my shop. Welcome to this fourth and final class of hand skills building a jewelry box. I've trimmed the lid down and now it's time to hinge it. It has a clearance on it which is about a veneer thickness clearance on either side so I'm going to put some veneer shims in here to lock it securely in place. So I'm going to put the, the jewelry box up on edge here, maybe secure it. I'm going to do my initial mark. Let's see, let's get this shim in. My initial mark at two inches. On either side. And give myself a nice reference line. The hinges that I'm going to use are Brousseau hinges and they're stopped hinges. In other words, they only open up so far and it will not open up all the way so you don't need a chain stay or any other kind of way of securing the lid from going back too far. So these hinges here, I'll need to do a width. <clears throat> make a, a good mark here and now it is time to chisel these hinges in or mortise them in. What I'm going to do is mark the hinge how far back it needs to be and on this the full barrel needs to be exposed onto the back and if I can line it up and I can kind of sight the hinge over the indents and over either edges. I can actually do a line here with a, a sharp pencil and I will be cutting inside of this line. I will also do this to the other side where I'll be making a mark here on this side and on this side and now then I can start chiseling it in. So I'm almost done hinging this lid here. Okay, looks like it'll go in. It's nice and flush. Now I have to do this to all the sides and then I can do a trial fit. Okay, all the mortising is done. I'm hoping the lid will fit. This is always a tough part for a lot of people. You know, it takes some precision to line up everything. And um, it doesn't always work out how you expect. Uh, there's always usually some adjustment or something that needs to happen. Okay, the moment has arrived. It's a little tight on this corner, a little loose on this corner, so it will need to be bumped ahead just a very slight bit, but those are all minor adjustments. Now it's time to finish the floor up. I'm ready to glue the fabric onto the floor, and in this uh, instance I've used a, or I've found some very nice shimmery purple velvet. I think that'll look really nice, and it has these small hairs that uh, stand up on the fabric so it's easier to grab your jewelry. So the secret for gluing fabric on uh, a foundation is that you want to stretch it out nicely so there's no wrinkles and it's not pulled in any direction and that it's completely at its relaxed state, whatever the shape of the piece might be. Now there will be uh, a need to uh, put spray adhesive on the back of the board. Thank you. 
So the reason that I turned this can upside down to clear the nozzle is so it works next time. Otherwise, the adhesive clogs the nozzle. Okay, I'm ready to trim this off. I'm using an X-Acto knife or a scalpel and keeping it low. I can trim it down. It's not so important that this edge is perfectly clean because it's trapped inside the rabbit. So you always find maybe a little bit of fuzz, something around the perimeter. And now it's ready to drop into the box, which has been pre-drilled. There it goes. It appears like it fits. Okay, time for the knob. So you can see by my sketch on the, um, on the blueprint what the knob is that I think would look nice, but it's going to be kind of a hand shape anyway. Now I'm going to cut this out on the bandsaw and shape the rest of it. Alright, I think that the knob looks pretty much done. I have a slight slope or a taper here. Uh, it's all nicely sanded. And uh, I want to make sure that I have the middle of the box, 15 inches overall, which makes seven and a half. And the knob itself is um, two and a half inches, so I'm going to put that at one and a quarter. And now I'm going to glue it onto the center of the box. And that should be, should be it for now. So, belts on the bottom. So this box is now done. I finished this box using a variety of things that I have here on the bench. I wanted to bring out the luster of the, uh, and, and the color of the cherry and to deepen the color. I wanted to use some kind of an oil, but I didn't want to take the time to go through the several coats of oil that it needed. And uh, so I, I put a coat of tongue oil finish. This product from Wind Wax is, it says it's a tongue oil finish. Most likely it's not tongue oil. It's maybe linseed oil, a bit of tongue, uh, and some dryers and other solvents to make it, uh, uh, make it harden. But I put a layer of this, let it sit overnight, cleaned it off with steel wool, and then I put a uh, a layer of thin down shellac to seal the oil in. After that, I could apply any finish that I would like. I could do a water base finish, I could do a lacquer, I could do conversion varnish. Well, the easiest thing I found was to put maybe two or three coats of clear wood finish from Deft, and between each coat, I'll buff it down with 4 aught steel wool, cleaning with steel wool, and then putting another coat on. After that, blue label paste wax or some kind of good paste wax, and this box is then done. This concludes the fourth and final segment of this Hand Skills online program for building a jewelry box. I hope that you've learned useful techniques that will help you develop as a woodworker, and you get to use this knowledge on your next woodworking project. When you finish your box, send us a photo of your work, and we'll post it with your permission, of course. The next title of this three class series is called Veneering 101, where we'll make a simple bookmatch veneer panel to use in this box or in a cabinet or a table. Then finally, the last class is called Marquetry 101, which is the last class of this series. Here I show the simplest way of making a traditional floral marquetry pattern, and it can even be mounted or inlaid into a wood surface like this jewelry box. It could be used in a cabinet door or even a chair back. Both classes come with an optional kit that has tools and supplies that you can use to do this work. And I wish to thank all of the supporters and the encouragement from others that have made this class possible. And above all else, 
Have fun woodworking. Mm -hmm.